We're a little behind, so we're going to have to uh, move quickly. I canceled class that last Wednesday. I don't think there's much point in having class based on my attendance on Mondays and Tuesdays. All right, let's see. Is it here? Is it there? And pass. There we go. Yes. There we go. So there is a, uh, let's see, we're finishing up module 14 today. Module 15 is where we're supposed to be this week. There is a practice writing assignment that'll be due Monday, right? Uh, don't worry about that last Desmos activity one. I can never get it to work. I'm just giving everybody full credit on that one. Uh, and your exam three is Wednesday. So let's figure out how to solve equations with uh, logs. So stuff like this, they say you could just set the exponents equal to one another because you have a like base. Well, that's obvious because I could just take log base two of both sides. Two x minus four, right? Log base two and two to the undo one another. So you have x minus one equals two x minus four. All right, so it's not something new that you have to memorize. It's something that comes straight from the law, uh, the rules of uh, logarithms and exponentials. All right. Uh, same thing goes for this one. Since it's both base five, you're good. And the same thing goes for logs. If I had natural log of, I don't know, x squared equals natural log of x plus four, because both sides are natural log, I could just say x squared has to be x plus four. And we could see that because we could just do e to the power of both sides e to the natural log undo one another because natural log is log base e. Y'all remember your basic rules of exponents and logs, right? b to the x. If I take log base b, it's b to the x, I get the x back because they're inverses. Or b to the log base b of x, I get the x back because they're inverses, right? Basic rules of the definition of what a log is the inverse of an exponential. So what if we get something like this? This is the same thing. It's like you might be like, well, I have an eight and a 16. Well, eight is two cubed. And 16 is two to the fourth. And an exponent to an exponent, you multiply them. All right, and if I take log base two of both sides, I get this, right? And you just throw these away because they're the same base. From here, you know how to solve for x, right? It's just basic uh, algebra. Y'all follow me? Yeah, this is stuff y'all learned in college algebra. So let's look at some more example. All right, this is two to the one half, right? Since I have two to the five X equals two to the one half, then five X has to equal one half, same base. Okay. That's nothing new here. Uh, this one, here's a different approach, okay? You could think about the graphs, right? Think about this as a graph. That's an exponential. It looks like this. Boop. Look at this side, minus two. That's down here. All right, that's what they've drawn right here. Those graphs never cross. So if you think of that as a function and graph it, think of that as a function and graph it. 
you can see these things never cross, so there are no solutions. Okay, does that make sense? It's a nice trick. All right. Visually in your head, you can look at this and go, that never crosses that, so there are no solutions. If I was going to do it mathematically, I'd be like, okay, what if I took natural log of both sides? Immediately, right, I want to take this and bring it out front because remember your other rule, you have like x to the r, you can bring the exponent out front, right? That's what I was trying to do to get my x out of there. But this right here is undefined. You can't take the log of a negative number. Remember, your logs look like this, right? You can only plug positive numbers in. There is no log over here. You can't plug a negative number into your log, okay? So that's showing mathematically that there are no solutions, right? Or you can think of it graphically. They never cross. All right. Same thing for try it number four. If you took the log of both sides, you'd be taking the log of a negative 100, and that's undefined. You can't, you can't do that. Uh, here's a good one. Um, how would we solve this? I can't turn the five into a four or four into a five, right? The four is two squared, but five isn't two to any power. What would, what could I do? Well. Pick your favorite log, right? The way to get things out of the exponents is log, right? I'll pick my favorite one. I'll take natural log. What that does is it allows me to take this and put it out front. It gets the x's out of the exponent. So I have an x plus 2 times natural log of 5 equals x times natural log of 4, right? I can move this to this other side like that, factor out, if I multiply this through, I'd have x natural log of 5 plus 2 natural log of 5 minus x natural log of 4. This doesn't have any x's, so I'm going to move it over here. And it, this and this do have x's. So if I factor out my x, I got the natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 4. This dude, I'm moving to the other side, right? So now that I have all my x's consolidated, right? There was two of them. I just put them together and factored. I got negative natural log of five and divide by this number because it is just a number. There's my x. Now you could, this could look a lot of different ways, right? Um, I could treat this as an exponent and bring it up in here. I could write that as five to the negative two. And remember your uh, rules for combining logs? I could combine those like that, right? When you subtract, that means you combine them and divide. Now remember that, your basic rules? Log of x plus log of y is log of x times y. Or if there's a minus there, you're dividing instead of multiplying. There's only two rules, right? There's the, the exponent trick and then the combine them like this trick. Those are your two tricks, right? And this I could write as 1 over 25, 5 to the minus 2, right? So your answer might look like this or it might look like this. You can rewrite these things a lot of different ways, right? I mean, I could have taken log base 10 on both sides instead of natural log. The answer will look a little different, but they are all equal, right? Equal. Look at another one. All right, I can't turn a 2 into a 3 or a 3 into a 2. Pick your favorite log if I did natural log. That allows me to take the exponents and put them out front. All right, so if I distribute this guy, I got x natural log of 3 plus natural log of 3 
three, get all the X's together. Factor the X out. So X would be this natural log of three divided by this number. Right, which if I wanted to, I could combine these two as a natural log of two thirds, which is prettier, right? So follow me. All right. All right, what if you have E in there? Well, that's no different than the ones we just did. E is just a number, right? Don't freak out because we have an E. These are actually easier, right? If I divide both sides by 20, right? This is really just five, right? But then I take natural log of both sides. Remember, natural log of E to the 2T is just 2T, right? Because natural log is log base E. So then divide both sides by two. All right, you use the same methods that you used up here in this example. Instead of a two or a three, we have an E for a base. So what? It's just a number. It doesn't change anything, right? Uh, let's look at these here. This one is easy because you could turn it into the problem we just had, right? If I subtract five from both sides, right? Here's my X, I need to isolate it. So subtract five from both sides, I got that, right? Um, divide both sides by four. And now take natural log of both sides. Right, because natural log of E to the two X is a two X. Now divide both sides by two. Here's one where they get tricky. Uh, not that tricky. There's E, there's two of them, right? But they're the same thing. E to the 2T, E to the 2T, right? If I subtract E to the 2T from both sides, I get this, right? There's seven over here and one over there. Subtract one from both sides. Divide by six. Uh, natural log of both sides, three six is the same as one half. Natural log of e to the two t is two t. Divide by two. Uh, now they throw in a tricky, tricky one, right? Well, this trick only works because this is the same thing as e to the x squared. I'll move my 56 over. This is the same thing as say k squared minus k minus 56, right? Where k is e to the x. This is a quadratic, right? If I call this k, right? I could factor that. K, k, let's see. Multiply to be a negative 56, but add to be a minus one. Uh, eight and seven, right? Eight times seven is 56, isn't it? Right? But this is really e to the x. Okay? This is just a quadratic in e to the x. Instead of a quadratic in x, it's a quadratic in e to the x, right? This is e to the x squared. So either e to the x equals eight or e to the x equals minus seven. This has no solution because e to the x looks like this, minus seven is down here, right? e to the x is always positive. There's no number I can plug in for x that's gonna give me a negative number, right? e to the anything is gonna be positive. So from here, take natural log of both sides. Natural log of e to the x is just x and then you have natural log of eight. You might see problems like that. Again, this only works if you have e to the x squared and an e to the x if it's an actual quadratic, right? If this was an e to the three x, you couldn't do that. 
Um, look at some more basic examples here. This is all recap from college algebra so far. Here's our x. Let's isolate it. Let's see if I subtract three from both sides, divide both sides by two. And now to get the natural log out of here, I'll do e to the power of both sides. So x is e squared. And look at another one. It's going to be the exact same trick. Uh, here's our x. Let's get it by itself. Subtract 6 from both sides. I get that. To get rid of the natural log, I do e to the power of both sides. So x is e to the fourth. Okay, uh, solve for x. There's our x. Well, let's isolate our log here. Divide both sides by 2. To get rid of the natural log, I'll do e to the power of both sides. So 6x equals e to the 7 halves. And divide by 6. Uh, use a graph. Eh, boring. We can do that. Using a graph, y'all know how to graph this, graph that. All right, well, natural log of x looks like this, three looks like that. Somewhere over here they cross. All right, you, where do they cross? Well, if we did e to the power of both sides, x equals e cubed. That's where they cross. And there's no need to use a graph and eyeball it. Y'all know how to do the math. I want us to do here. We're not going to use a graphing calculator. All right. I could do this two different ways. I could be like, uh, I could do natural log of both sides because that'll let me take the x and put it out front. And then divide both sides by that guy. All right. Or what if I said, I want to do a different log. I want to take log base 10 of both sides. A thousand is 10 cubed. That's why I might be tempted to take log base 10 because I recognize this as a power of 10, just three. I take the X, bring it out front. I got X times log base 10 of two equals three. This is the same as this, right? If we did our change of base formula, remember your change of base formula? I want to change this to natural log. So I just go, okay, fine, natural log. But I can't just do that. I have to fix it. I have to do the natural log of whatever this base is. Right? So over here, if I, if I replace this with this, Right, I would get a natural log of two and then the natural log of 10, right? I could bring this in as an exponent, right? It's the same thing I got, they are equal, right? They look different because we use different bases, but it's simple change of base formula allows you to see that they are the same thing. So if you're comparing your answers with you know what somebody else got and they don't look the same, maybe you just took a different approach. Doesn't mean they're not equal, right? So I mean you have your basic rules. You got log of x plus log of y is log of x times y. So if this is a minus you divide and then you have the log of x to the r is r log of x, you have that trick, right? And that's basically it. And the definition that logs are the inverses of exponentials. If you have something like b to the x equals y, if I take log base b of both sides, 
those undo one another, x is log base b of y. So switching between uh, exponential and logarithmic form, right? All we're using is the definition here that log base b of b to the x is x, or b to the log base b of x is x. So those are the definitions, logs are the inverses of exponentials. You have this trick and this trick. Using this definition, you show this, how to switch between exponential and log. That's everything. It's every, all the tricks you need to know to deal with all the logs. Okay. Um, Both of these are natural logs, right? If I did e to the power of both sides, I'm getting x squared equals 2x plus 3. And from there, y'all know how to solve that, OK? Um, you have to be careful. If you solve this, and you're going to get two answers, right? This right here says that x squared has to be positive because you cannot take the log of a negative number, OK? And that means that x has to be positive. This one, 2x plus 3 has to be positive, right? That means x has to be bigger than negative 3 halves, right? Well, this one kind of supersedes that one, right? So if you solve this and you get an x that's a negative number, you have to throw it out because it's not a solution to the original equation, all right? So whenever you do these little tricks, Sometimes you might be adding solutions to the equation. So you have to be careful. You have to go back to the original equation and make sure the x's you get, you can actually plug into this, right? Because there's nothing wrong with plugging in a negative x right here. You can plug in a negative number here, right? You can't plug in a negative number here, though, OK? Well, actually, I screwed this up. This one, x squared has to be positive. That does not mean that, right? This means x could be any real number, right? Because if you take a negative number and square it, it's still positive, right? Basically, what this says is x cannot be 0. 0 is the only number you can't plug in here because you can't take natural log of 0 or any negative number, OK? So but this one here is legit. x has to be bigger than negative 3 halves. So if you solve this and you get a number less than 3 halves, you got to throw it out because it doesn't count. Look at this one here. So this says that x can't be 0, right? Any other number, you square it, it's going to be positive. You can take the log of a positive. If I do e to the power of both sides, I'm getting x squared equals 1. So x has to be either positive or negative 1, right? If I plug in either a positive or a negative and square it, I'm going to get a positive 1 here. And that's going to work out, right? I'll get natural log of 1 equals natural log of 1. So both these answers check out, so we're good there. This one, um, this is about half-lives, right? When you're solving real-world problems, the half-life of a material is like something that they put in tables and stuff. Like if you're going to ask like, how long will it take for 10% of some material to decay? Well, you need to know something about that material, right? It's rate of decay, right? Typically the way that information is stored is via half-life. So here's different substances. Here's their different half-lives, okay? So the way I always approach this is, remember your uh, interest right, your basic interest formula. But uh, we would call this, we would stick with the amount, right? P is the principal for the amount at time zero, OK? And if we're not talking about interest rates, we'll usually call this K, OK? Because interest rates were annual, right? It's an annual interest rate. Well. Sometimes in applied math, uh, physics and stuff, we want to talk about instead of an annual decay, we want to talk about like days, you know, 
might be days or weeks. So we use a K instead of an R. And if stuff is decaying, instead of increasing, if it's decaying, that's negative, okay? So if you're asking about a half-life, it's like, when is the amount half of the original, uh, the initial amount? So if I replace that with half of what we started off with, those fall out of the equation, right? Remember, the, the time it takes for your principal to double doesn't depend on the principal at all. It depends on the interest rate. It doesn't depend on your initial amount. The time it takes to double $1,000 is the same amount of time it takes to double $1, right? As long as it's the same interest rate. Because you can see right here, if I replace this with P over 2, the P's fall out, right? So let's solve for our half-life here. This is just one half now. If I take natural log of both sides, Natural log of E2 to undo one another, right? Now divide by this. That's the half-life. They call this capital T, okay? So we're not using any new stuff, but what the book does here is they give you this chart and then they just throw down this formula to, to memorize, which I find incredibly annoying. All right, if you can't read that, that's natural log of 0 0.5 or natural log of one half. All right, so they have A naught E to the natural log of one half divided by T, big T, where big T is the half life of the substance. So if you're looking for like uh, 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 an amount of a, you know, the given substance after a given amount of time, you look up the half-life and you use this formula or this formula. These are all the same thing, right? Uh, so for brevity, it's still this. And let's look at an example here. I don't like this stuff because it's there's not a lot of math here. It's just looking up information in a chart, right? Okay, how long will it take for 10% of the 1,000 gram sample of uranium-235 to decay, all right? Um, so 10% would be a, a 100 grams, right? So we want 1,000 to drop down to 900, okay? So this would be our A naught, that's our original amount. This needs to be our A of T, right? In the ending amount. So we use our little formula here. You can use any version of it, but we just plug in the numbers. First, we have to look up the half-life for uranium and it's this number, 703 million or whatever. All right, so this is hard to see here, but um, they're replacing this is A of T. They're replacing A of T with 900. They're replacing A naught with 1,000. And then we have E to the natural log of 0.5. And then capital T here. That's the half-life they looked up at 703,000, whatever. And then the little T. So they replace this with whatever that number is, that huge ass number. Okay. So you're just looking at the chart, plugging in what you know. All right, so we have what is it, a thousand of those, 900, and then we got to solve for T. So that's where the math comes in, okay? So let's write this down. We plug in our numbers. Uh, natural log of a half T over 703800000. Okay, if we're gonna solve for T, we've already done this. This isn't any different than two equals three E to the four T, right? Y'all know how to solve for this. You divide by that and take natural log of both sides. Same thing here, we'll divide by a thousand, right? Boop, 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 boop. Take natural log of both sides. So you have natural log of nine, 10. The natural log of E to the go away. You got natural log of a half over 7380000 t. This is just a number, divide by it. All right, 
that's what they're doing here, right? Um, divide by 1,000, take natural log of both sides, the natural log and the e to the undo one another. This pile of stuff is just a number, so you divide by it. Plug it into your calculator. All right, so if you get into these problems, that's how you, you, you work them. You use any form of this formula here. You can use that one or that one. Okay. Uh, we could have used this one because they gave us the A naught, they gave us the A T, and we'd have known the half life. So I'd have just used that version of the formula. Right? They used this version. Right? Same difference. They just took the E to the natural log and combined them, right? So that's how you deal with these half-life problems. Just use the formula, look at the chart, plug in the numbers, solve the T, okay? I mean, if you could solve this, right, you could solve this, you could solve this, because it's the same stuff, actually. It's just bigger numbers. And uglier stuff, but it's the same process. That's it for four module, whatever this module is, 14. Uh, let's start learning modules. Let's get up there. All right. So here's our last module. We have the rest of today and then Wednesday. When is our final? I don't remember the exact day. Uh, it should be on the syllabus. You can Google UTSA final exam schedules and it'll tell you when all of your finals are because it just depends on the days that your classes meet and the time. That's how they schedule the final exam. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yes. What? Yes. Yeah, the final exam will be via web work. All right, so let's see. We have just this section right here uh, for this last module. There was a writing, if we finish this today, then maybe we'll have time. It's time to look at the writing assignment, okay? Um, exponential growth and decay, okay. I haven't covered this in my last class yet, so it's my first time to look at this. Why did that just move? Let's go back. All right, real world problems. Again, this is exactly what I said before. It's just like what you learned about interest, except when you're applying it to things that aren't money and interest, right? And you're not talking about an annual rate of increase, right? You might have days. They change the R to a K and they change the P to an A naught. Sometimes they do N equals N naught E to the KT. They might call it N instead of A for amount. They might use N for number like the number of bacteria or something. It's all the same thing, okay? So here's your basic exponential. It goes upwards, all right? So if we're gonna look at this, it's like, this is obviously some kind of exponential. Well, what is it, right? Well, this tells you that there's a two here, and now we got some kind of base to uh, an exponent, right? Well, what's the base? Well, if we look right here at, what is this? One third, we should be able to figure out what this uh, function is. Uh, we have different points, we could figure it out. Uh, I think that's the purpose of this, let's see. In our choice of a function, we often use data points. Although parts of each of the two graphs seem to lie on the x-axis, they are really a tiny distance above the x-axis. Yeah, this thing is not touching the x-axis, all right? 
Uh, here's another example. I can look at this and I can be like, this is decay. So this is like, we got some number and then it's got to be a negative because it's decaying, right? So the thing is, is like, you have to figure out what your A naught is and there could be a number there, right? So how do you figure out what A naught and K are, right? Well, there's two unknowns, right? If you have two different points, you can plug those in. If I plug in uh, an A and an X, and then I plug in an A and X again, I'll have two equations with two unknowns, and I can solve for this and this, and I can figure out what the actual formula for this thing is. All right, so let's look at some examples of that. So these are the ones that show up the most in, in science, your, your, your basic uh, exponentials. Uh, usually in the natural world, it's going to be base E, right? It's a natural log, right? It's the natural base. All right, so if we're looking at this thing, um, it's going to have this form, Y equals A naught E to the KT, right? We have to figure out what the A naught and the K are. All right, so if I'm looking, uh, if the K here is positive, it's increasing. If the K is negative, it's decreasing, all right? Uh, these intercepts here, right? That's where if you plug in zero, right? If you plug in zero for T, you just get the A naught. So if you just look at this, that number there is always gonna give you your A naught right off the bat, okay? That's, your, that's why they call it the A sub zero, so it's A at time zero. Okay, so your initial uh, amount, initial amount. Okay, look at this guy. The population of bacteria doubles every hour. If the culture started with 10 bacteria, graph the population. So here we're going to take the formula and graph it, right? We started off with 10. All right. So we know our function needs to look like, uh, and then our population is doubling every hour. So our amount, we start off with 10, and it's doubling every hour. So T here is in hours, right? And we want a base 2 because it says doubling. Right. If you replace t with zero, you just get ten. So at time zero, you get ten. So that's how you would set up your formula. From there, you can just graph it. Okay. Um, what do I got going on here? When an amount grows at a six percent per unit time, the growth is exponential. To find a naught, we use the fact that a naught is the amount at time zero. To find k, we use the fact that after one hour. Okay. So we can't do what I just did. Uh, well, we could. Uh, we'd have to change the base. They want this to be uh, with a base E here. Okay. So there's two different approaches. What I just did, if you want to change this to a base E, you do you a change of base for exponentials. You also thought it was a change of base for logs, right? So, all right. So uh, if you take a different approach to getting the same formula where you want it to be base E, all right, you still start off with y equals 10. You're going to want e to the kt. We got to figure out what k is here. All right, so um, use the fact that after one hour, the population doubles. All right, so they're setting it up. They're saying uh, uh, at one hour, if this thing looks like this, they replace this with twice the initial and they replace T with one. So after one hour, the amount should double, right? So that's how they get this. They're setting up this guy. We know this, we want the time to double. Well, so they're picking a specific time at T equals one, this guy should look like this. And now we can solve for K. 
All right, so if you divide both sides by 10, take natural log of both sides, you see that K is natural log of two. So if K is natural log of two, we have amount equals 10 E to the natural log of two T, okay? Um, but this, all right, so that's it. That's our formula with base E, right? So K is natural log of two, but these undo one another. And see 10 times two, no, I can't just do that, hold on. This is 10 E, the natural log of two to the T power, right? These are being multiplied, right? So I could treat it as an exponent to an exponent, all right? So I have 10, these undo one another, two to the T. That's what I wrote down right here, right? That's what seemed obvious from the start, right? But if you want this instead of a base two, you want it to use the base E, you could use this different approach here, right? You know it, you know you want it to look like this. They told you what this was. Pick a point in time where you know what the amount will be at time one. We know this should be 20. You could solve for your K and plug it back into your original equation. So that's a different approach if you want it to be base E, right? So this is the same thing as this, okay? So it depends on what the, what the book asks for, right? Usually we like things with base E, right? Because there's that button on the calculator. There isn't a two to the X button on the calculator, right? But mathematically they're equivalent. Uh, oh, here's a picture. Get this quick picture in here. So this is the same thing as 10 and two to the X. Right, just a different base, so we did a change of base formula. Uh, Half-life. So half-life, uh, let's relate this to our finance, right? Well, that's for if something's growing, right? If you're, the money you put in the bank is growing. If we want it to be decaying, we, we have this, right? For a half-life, we want to find out when the amount is half the principal. So we replace the amount with half the principal. The principal falls out, right? If I take natural log of both sides, I got that, divide by this. There's your half-life, all right? So it's the same thing here, but they start off with something, yeah. They take uh, the amount and replace it with half the initial amount and they solve for T. So they're getting the same thing. So there's your half-life. Uh, why do they have a T here? I have a little half. Oh, okay. This is the same thing as two to the minus one. Right, and you can bring the exponent out, which would cause the minuses to cancel. So I'm still off by a minus. What the hell did I do? Uh, replace the amount with half the initial amount. Oh, I see. Um, they are letting their k be negative. I explicitly put a minus there, right? Typically they don't, they won't put a minus there. They'll just say that K could be negative. See what I mean? Um, so depending on how you interpret K, all right? Uh, I put the K there, the minus there specifically. So you'd see, oh, it's a negative number, all right? But typically they won't put a minus there. They'll just say K can be negative. So if K is a negative number, then you end up with that. Okay, so if K is negative, you have a negative negative, which is a positive, all right? So be careful with your variables, right? Sometimes 
the, the letter K can represent a negative number. Okay. So different books will present it differently. All right. So just be careful with that. And this in this uh, setup, K uh, can be uh, negative. K must, all right, here they're saying K must be negative. All right, so a negative negative gives you a positive because you want a positive amount of time. We don't want to talk about negative time, right? And I guess that's it for today. We'll pick up on Half-Life next time. And we'll finish out this uh, section. Let's get out of here.